How's it going everybody? In today's video, we are going to be making an, an Ajaxified archive page. So what we have is a list of blog posts. And then when you click a button down here at the bottom, it lists another group of posts. On top of that, we will also be updating the URL bar as we start to view more pages. So when we refresh the page, we are on the next page of posts and where they're kind of right back where they were. Um, so if you are new here, make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to make sure you get notified of my weekly WordPress tutorials. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so let's take a look at what we would have normally here by default. We have a list of posts and at the var very bottom of the list of posts, we have just a default pagination. You click number two, it takes us to page number two. You click on page number three, it takes us to page number three. So we're looking to replace that feature with the Ajaxified workflow. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by jumping over into our code and let's just get rid of that. And instead of that, we're just gonna put a button here. And so this button is gonna be the thing that they click when they want to add more posts. So there's a couple pieces of information that we're gonna need every time that somebody clicks that post, or we're gonna to need to know when the page loads at the very least. So what we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna grab the WP query. It's a global variable that gives us all the information about what's going on on this page. And then on top of that, we are gonna be pulling out a couple different pieces and we're just gonna be putting them into data attributes on the uh, main tag. So we're grabbing uh, the query var of paged and what that looks like is that is, let me just go back to my uh, uh, browser here and that's what this number is. So if paged will be equal to three on this page. So we know what page we are on in pagination. And then the other thing that we're grabbing is we're grabbing the max number of pages. Double WP query will tell us, well, all right, depending on how many posts per page you have set, you have this many pages that you can uh, visit before you run out of posts. So after we have that, we now need to hook this part up to JavaScript. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my main app file here, and then I'm gonna import Ajax load more from, well, let's actually create it, that might be helpful. Ajax load more.js. And let's do something like const Ajax load more equals a function. And then let's export default Ajax load more. And then that means we can come over here and we can say, go into lib and give me Ajax load more. And it's not form, it's from. And it's not import, it's import. All right, I think we're good now. Uh, all we're gonna do is just run Ajax load more when the page is ready. So now that we have this, let's just console.log hello, and then just, just make sure that it's working. And then let's go back to our page here, hit refresh, and let's check our console. Let's just wait for my computer to boot up. It says hello, so we're good to go there. So going back to our code, we can delete this console log. And what we're gonna do is we're going to grab that button that we created and then we are going to make sure that it actually exists onto the page. Don't want any sort of errors happening and breaking all of our JavaScript. We're gonna to check to make sure that somebody is actually clicking on this. Oops, that's reversed. And once somebody clicks on it, we need to check for a couple different things. So like we just saw in our index page, we have data-page and data-max. We are looking for those two numbers inside of JavaScript so we can send it on up to uh, WordPress. So after that, we need to actually have Axios installed. You may have seen it magically appear on the top of my page. Uh, we are using Axios for this, so all you have to do is run npm install Axios if that's what you decide to use for your um, Ajaxing. So once we have that, we need to do a couple special things. So turns out, and this is something that I learned with WordPress, is it requires you to send across the data in a special format. Uh, Axios will send it over in JSON and we need it to be like a, a special string, a URL search param string. 
So we are sending over an action, which we'll call load more posts. And if you've watched any of my Ajax tutorials, you know what that means. Uh, the current page that we're on and the maximum number pages of pages that we are looking at. We actually probably don't need to send over any of those. We're just gonna care about the current page for now. Uh, so next up, we are going to use Axios to post our data up to WordPress. And so we have a special URL that we're going to send it to, wp-admin, admin-ajax.php, and we're going to send over our current page. So once that comes back, we want to take the response, and we want to start looping over these posts. Not looping over these posts, but we need to actually take the posts that are uh, coming from WordPress and insert them into our page. So what all we're gonna do for now is just console log our response. Uh, just RES for now, and then let's go over to WordPress. So let's just open up our functions.php, and what we're gonna do is we are going to have a new action. So we're gonna add an action called uh, WP Ajax no priv load more posts and this action that or this action is um, appended with load more posts because of the action that we gave it right here and then we are going to give it a function to run once that uh, action is hit and so we're just going to call that as well load more posts we're going to duplicate this line and get rid of the no priv because we are logged in right now and we want to be able to load more posts as well so we're going to write a new function called load more posts and then we're going to take in uh, that uh, post so what we have is we got sent from axios our current page and we're just adding plus one so if we're on page one we want to go from plus uh, page one to page two and then we are going to uh, set up a new WP query with that information in it. So we have a new WP query. We're just doing 10 posts per page right now because that's what um, we have set in our admin. And then we're sending page to equals next page. So this will be page two, page three, page four, as we keep going. So then all we're gonna do is we're going to grab this guy here and create that query. So if the query has posts, we're gonna start an object buffer. And then while we have posts, we're going to get the template part of template parts content. So what we have is some template parts that has just the articles individually in them. So uh, if we go to template parts and then we go to content, each individual article can live inside of here. And then so we can loop over these, it will get the ID, the post class, the title, the thumbnail, all the things that we need. It'll loop over that and give us back a string when we call OB get clean. And we are gonna send a JSON response back to Axios in our JavaScript to tell us here's a big string of all the posts, do what you will with them. So once we have that, we can actually start loading in these posts. So let's get rid of this, con well, let's check, now that we put that console log there, let's actually check it out. So let's get rid of page three and just go to our home page here. And then let's hit uh, load more posts, we get our response. So if we open that up and get data, we now have a giant string of our next 10 posts. So now we can take that and insert that into our HTML. We have our index.php, we have a class right here, and this is what is being looped over by our main query. So we're going to shove our posts to the bottom of this uh, main uh, tag. So what we can do is we can um, grab that posts list, and then we will delete that grab our posts lists and we're gonna take the uh, post list entered in HTML and we're going to add our response.data.data. So that's the stuff that we saw in here. We were looking at a response.data.data. That's our articles. That's the HTML that we wanna shove in there. So, but we also need to make sure that we're not going too far. So if our uh, post list, uh, or if our uh, current page is equal to our max number of pages, then we want to remove our button. So we can take the button that we 
uh, select it up here and we can, it's kind of a weird way that it happens in vanilla JavaScript is you grab um, its parent node and then you remove the child node off of it, which is the thing itself. So um, anyway, so that way when we loads more posts, if there's no more posts, the button won't appear so we can't click it again. Um, so let's see what that gives us. And going back to our page, let's refresh. And let's close this. We can click load more posts. We get some more. And we get some more. There are uh, not different yet. So we get page two, but we don't get page three and we don't get page four, etc. So what we're gonna do is we need to actually update the, num the page inside of our source code. So if we were to look at what's going on inside of here, our data dash page is equal to one. We click it again, it's still one, but every time we're clicking that button, we're just grabbing that value. So we have to update that value every time that it comes back successfully here. So we're gonna get that uh, data and then we are going to take our post list and say that the data um, uh, set page is plus plus, meaning it's gonna increment by one. So let's try that again. Let's refresh. Let's take a look at our source code here and just make sure things update as we expect. So we're on data page one, we're on data page two, we're on data page three, and we're getting additional pages here. However, we are not getting our page uh, history updated. Our URL bar is still the same. So if somebody were to refresh the page, all of a sudden we're back to page one's thing. So in order to do that, you have to use the history API. So what we have is access to um, something called window.history. And you have a bunch of methods on that, like pop state and replace state, but we're gonna be using something called push state. So what we need to do is we need to do window.history.push state. And the first two parameters we're not gonna really mess with, and even the second one most browsers ignore anyway. But this third one is what you want the URL to be. So technically we could do like something fake and hit save. We can go back and when we hit load more posts, it says something fake. So this is just an opportunity for us to match what WordPress would normally do when you are clicking those normal pagination buttons because technically those still exist. So if we were to just go to slash page slash two, we're actually getting page two's pages and we are going to get page three's pages if we were to just manually type it in. So we're helping our users by uh, giving them that URL bar. That way if they refresh the page or copy and paste it to one of their friends or something like that, they'll get some better results. So what we need to do here is we need to um, grab the current URL. And so here's a little snippet for that. We get window.location. We're making sure that we're on the right protocol, whether it's HTTP or HTTPS, and we're getting our host off of that. And we don't care about anything else after it, because if you grab everything else after that, then it's going to cause some issues. So what we can then do after is replace our push state with something that looks like this. So we're skipping the first two parameters. We're taking this base URL and then we're adding page slash and then we're getting our current page and then adding plus one to it. So then we're going to hit uh, save and we can hit um, refresh after deleting the other pieces of the URL and then we can hit load more posts and we're getting slash page slash two and we're getting page three slash three. So this is a quick tutorial about how to get up and running with an Ajaxified uh, archive page. If you like the video, make sure you hit the like button and leave a comment. Let me know if this is a way that you would do it. If you got a better way, always looking to improve. So thanks for watching. I appreciate the support and I will see you in the next one.